So, looking at stress tests again, the anterior stress test, which uh, I won't demonstrate, is exactly the same as it was in the thoracic spine, but in the cervical thoracic region. But as you come down the spine, it's more essential than ever that you come onto the transverse processes and not the spinous process. The reason being that the spinous processes in this part of the spine are very oblique so that um, you're certainly not producing an anterior shear when you push on these, rather you're producing an extension of the bone. So it will not be a true stress test. But if you stick to the technique that we looked at in the cervical thoracic region, that is pushing through both transverse processes at the same time, you'll be able to determine whether or not you have an anterior instability. Posterior instability test, uh, um, test in, these, in this area is actually a little easier than in the cervical thoracic because we're going to use the patient's own musculature to do the work for us. Looking at Bev, we'll come into this position and I'll get the patient just to move a little bit closer to me. Now if you're a little bit uncomfortable with the patient being in this position you can put a, a pillow or a sheet between the two of you and let them push against the pillow. But I'm going to get her to just lean into me this way and she rests her forearms against my chest. Okay. And what I'm going to do is just get her to sit up a little straighter there. I'm going to use my fingers to block the inferior transverse, uh, the inferior vertebra. So I shall stabilize the lower vertebra with this sort of a grip while I'll palpate the superior spinous process with my index finger. So all of these fingers are stabilizing and this finger will be palpating. Now in this position I'll get the patient to very, very gently push her arms against my chest and like so. Now this is going to be done very gently, otherwise she'll co-contract the muscles around the spine and you'll feel nothing. So it's a very gentle push, again even gentler, and relax. And what I'm feeling for is for that superior spinous process to drift back over my palpating fingers. And just to prepare you for the lumbar spine, this is the way we will test posterior stability through the lumbar spine as well. and relax. It's a very sensitive test providing that the patient doesn't push too hard and that you're being careful about simply palpating with that finger rather than actually pressing hard against the spinous process. We can test lateral stability in this region. We could have tested in the, in the cervical thoracic but it becomes a little bit more problematical but as we come down the spine it's easier. And come towards me again. We'll have the patient put their arms back on their chest again. And in this case, what I'm going to try and do is stabilize the inferior vertebra, like so, as I shear to the left through her shoulder in this way. And again, what I'm feeling for, and I'm feeling it with the top of my knuckle there, I'm just feeling whether that superior vertebra is actually moving to the left. Now, this isn't a perfect stress test because there will be some side bending induced because of the orientation of the spinous processes but in fact in this one here I'm not, I can feel this movement occurring. So this joint here does feel a little unstable laterally. Thanks. The traction and compression test through this area are exactly the same as they were for the cervical thoracic region. So I'll not trouble you with looking at this again. And it's probably better the further down the spine you go that you press through the shoulders rather than through the head. So we've looked at anterior, posterior, lateral and vertical stress testing. 